Hello and welcome to the Kent Football Show. I'm your host Quaker Afari and we're here at Princess Park, the home of Dartford FC. It's a busy one today as the women's and girls take over. Make sure you put your feet up, grab a snack and enjoy the show. Coming up in the show, we speak to Kent and England superstar Alicia Russo about her journey from grassroots football to the professional game. Then behind the scenes action from Kent referees Kirsty Down and Lou Saunders at the DFDS Kent Senior Cup Final at the Priestfield Stadium. Kent FA's Jeff Davies catches up with the Kent and Girls Ladies Football Leagues. We head down to Selling's Ladies FC to meet Gina Kendall, who we believe is the only female grounds person in Kent. We learn about the Her Game 2 movement and how clubs can get involved. Our very own Rebecca Moore catches up with Rising Stars FC to learn about their squad girls provision. It wouldn't be a show without David Webb's skills and drills. Then it's back to Rebecca Moore for an update on the only emerging talent centre for girls in Kent. We give you our top goals from this season's female cup finals. And lastly, Dartford women take on the crossbar challenge. First up, I had the privilege of talking to the queen of the back hill, Kent and England superstar Alicia Russo. And she told me all about her journey from grassroots football in Kent to the professional game. Let's check it out. Welcome, Alessia. It's a pleasure for you to join us on, uh, on, on the Kent Football Show today. Um, obviously, it's a busy time of the season for yourself. Uh, you've got the World Cup coming up. You've got the, the league running with Manchester United and the WSL. Um, so, we've got loads to talk about today. I do want to start off about your upbringing and where you grew up. Obviously, you grew up in Maidstone. Uh, you went to Simon Stock School um, and started playing football at Bearstead Football Club at a young age. Can you tell us a bit more about how you got into football? Yeah, I played with my dad and brothers. My dad ran a team down at the local park called West Farley. So that's how I got into it. And then used to keep going down there and get, get involved with all the boys. And finally, one day they let me join in. And then from there, I went to Best, did and played there for a few years um, and loved it and played for the boys and the girls team. Um, and then got into academy football when I was a little bit older. But yeah, started playing on loads of pitches down in Maidstone um, at my school as well. They were great and, and always supported me. So, um, yeah, it, it was really, really great and I loved it. And you said you were playing from like a young age. Was it a case that you knew straight away that you were better than most people you were playing up against? <laughs> um, I'm not sure I would say that, but I knew that it was something that I, I was good at and I loved doing. Um, so it was something that I wanted to just commit everything into and, and see what where it took me and what happened. And obviously you've been incredibly successful in your career thus far. Um, and you know the structure of football in Kent very well, obviously growing up there. What advice would you give to any players in Kent uh, to stay motivated and to pursue playing football, especially if they encounter uh, problems when it comes to accessibility in terms of playing football in Kent? Yeah, I think that's something that we're really trying to push as players right now. We want to make sure that every young boy and girl has a route into the game. Um, so it's something that we're fighting for to make sure that we don't miss out on any future superstars. Um, but I think my advice would be just take every opportunity and um, yeah, don't don't miss out and, and just enjoy it. I know that sounds simple and, and easy, but at the same time, it's easy to forget sometimes when things get really competitive. So just enjoy it, work hard and, and have fun with it. Obviously a huge part of your story um, is your involvement in the Euros. I was there for some of the games. I was there for the final uh, where you guys won the trophy. It was an amazing, incredible scenes. Um, and we've seen participation in women's football and girls football increase by 19.4% as a result of the euphoria um, surrounding the achievement of you guys winning the trophy. Uh, what would you say to a young person that's never played the game before in terms of, in terms of getting into it and, and being inspired by players like yourself? Yeah, I think why not try it? I think it's important that we were given the stages that we needed in the summer and we went out there and people could see how good the women's games become. Um, so I think, yeah, it's nice to finally get the recognition of, of things that women's football's deserved for many years. And with obviously the Euros and the World Cup coming up, it's no better time to be involved in women's football. And the FA have a, a couple of fantastic programmes to get more girls into the game. Um, and since Euros, Kent has seen uh, the number of centres for the Weetabix Wheat Wildcats increase to 72 and the squad girls increase to 24 across the county. How important do you feel these programmes are for getting girls involved in the game? Massive. I think it's really, really cool to see the numbers increase so much. 
and like I said before like our job from off the back of the Euros was to make sure that there was more and more people involved in the game and to hear that about your local area is really nice and I hope that it becomes even more because I know that there's girls that want to play football and, and you can see the, the hunger for it so hopefully the, the numbers keep rising and there's more opportunities for these girls to get involved like the the Weetabix events and other things that the FA are, are bringing in so it's great and and yeah like I said I just want more and more young boys and girls in particular to to get involved and never feel like they can't play football. And the increased in participation is directly related to achievements and you've had a number of achievements in your career obviously we've talked about the success of the Euros last year what would you say your biggest career achievement has been so far? Oh, it has to be winning the Euros. And I don't think anything can, can match that this far. I, I mean, I hope to go on and win lots more trophies. But yeah, right now, definitely the past summer. And you said you hope to go on and win more trophies. There's a, there's a huge one on the horizon. There's a World Cup in the summer. Hopefully, I'm going to be out there to watch you guys hopefully lift it for the first time. Um, how excited are you for the World Cup? And how... Do you think you guys should be rated in terms of uh, up against the other serious contenders at the World Cup? Yeah, I think it's a huge tournament. I think it's a pinnacle of world football. Everyone dreams about a World Cup and would love to play in one one day. And this opportunity coming up this summer is huge. And, and hopefully we can go on to achieve great things. But I think the competition in women's football has never been higher. Um, so it's going to be tough. But... I hope that obviously first and foremost when the squad's not out and that we've not been selected yet so first and foremost want to get in the squad and then push on and and compete and and hope to go on and and, and yeah obviously you want to say win it all but I know that that's tough and we're realistic with one game at a time so that's the attitude going into it and we'll be ready to face whoever whoever we come up against. Uh, you mentioned the squad hasn't been selected. So I'm, I'm pretty sure you're going to be in it. Um, two key members of that squad, or two key members of the winning Euros squad uh, in Leah Williamson and uh, Beth Mead aren't going to be available after he's suffering ACL injuries. Um, how much of a blow would that be to, to your hopes of trying to win that trophy in the summer? Yeah, it's tough, I think, when you lose such important members of the squad. It's really difficult, but... That's football. Unfortunately, injuries happen and it's a real shame that it's happened at this time for these two players because I can't speak highly enough of them um, on and off the pitch. They're just true professionals. So especially Leah's is a bit raw right now. Um, but yeah, it's it's really sad to see such top players get taken out of biggest tournaments where they belong. Um, so really wishing them all the best of their recovery um we just want them back with us as soon as possible but understand that things take time but yeah it's a blow but we play a team sport people have to step up um and you you have to you have to face it it happens to, to teams and players all the time so it's just part of football unfortunately and you have to just take it in your stride and go again Alicia thanks so much for your time today uh, good luck with the rest of the season in terms of club and country. I'm sure it's going to be a successful one for yourself. Uh, and yeah, hopefully we speak soon. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, guys. A massive thanks to Alicia for sharing her journey with me. And good luck in the World Cup. I'm sure the Lionesses can bring football home again. Last month, we hosted the DFBS Kent Senior Cup final at Priestfield Stadium in front of over 2,500 fans. Cup finals aren't just a big cage for the players on the pitch, but also the officials. So we went behind the scenes with Kirsty Dow and Lou Saunders as they prepare for their big day. Hi, I'm Nick, Referee Development Lead at the Kent FA, and we're here at Gillingham Football Club for tonight's DFDS Senior Cup Final. Credit to both teams for getting to the final, but we mustn't forget the third team. Four of our senior match officials have been selected and appointed on merit to take charge of tonight's final. We've brought our cameras along so that you can have a behind the scenes access and see what goes on. I became a referee because I've played football since I was about six years old until my early 20s, so football's all I've ever known. Refereeing's a great way to stay in the game and so many opportunities available to you.
Wow, what an evening. And it's definitely interesting to see the game through the referee's eyes. If you're interested in picking up the whistle, then make sure you drop us an email at referees at kentfa.com. Next up, we caught up with the Kent Girls and Ladies Football League. Hi, this is Jeff Davis, Head of Development and Investment at Kent FA. I'm here with Lee Willis, who's the Chair of the Kent Girls and Ladies Football League. Lee, it's great to have you here today. Thanks, Jeff. Good to be here. So can you just tell us, for those who don't know, a little bit about your league and, and what some of your plans are? Yeah. So the league's been going since 1995. Um, we've gradually grown the league, certainly in the last sort of 10, 15 years, where the women's game has become you know, really prevalent uh, everywhere and awareness is huge. We're hoping to carry that momentum on and keep growing. This year, we've had a record number of teams enter, 330. We've had over 4,200 players. Like you say, we're one of the biggest club, uh, biggest leagues in the country, if not the biggest in the country indeed, Jeff, I believe. So for us, we want to carry that momentum on into the coming years. And we've already got 10, 12 new clubs that are going to come in and hopefully enter some teams as well. I'm a Kent club who want to work in this area. What do I need to do? Who can I speak to? Kent FA. Reach out to the Kent FA. Um, they've got, obviously, yourselves, your development team, which are a huge support to the league and have been for years. Um, they've always got some great advice to use. Us as a league as well. Reach out to us. We're always happy to answer your questions and give you some insights and help you and, and hope you get you on the pathway to having that female section within your club. Or local clubs. Have a look on the league website. There's clubs around you, no doubt now, spread across the whole county that offer female football. Reach out to them. Have a chat. Why should I do it? Why not? It shouldn't be, why should I? Why not? You know, it's inclusive. We've got to be out there now. Clubs are growing all the time uh, and we need to be offering more pathways, more opportunities to the female, uh, female game. Someone tells me that you're unfortunately stepping down as chairman of the league. So just tell me, what has the last few years meant to you? It's, it's been fantastic to, to me to see the game grow as much as it has, certainly in the last sort of, like say, four or five years. It's, it's just been phenomenal. And all that hard work that the, the committee has put in over that time, looking at different ways to grow the game and really supporting it um, has really, really helped. And it's just, yeah, just amazing to be uh, basically, I think, at the top now. Biggest league in the country, I believe, yeah. So, I don't know if I mentioned that. No. But it's, uh, it's, it's fantastic. And hopefully that will, and it will carry on. Last question. Yes. Prediction for the World Cup? Well, England, of course, Jeff. Lee, thanks very much, and thanks for everything you've done. Amazing stuff there. And if you're interested in setting up a women's or girls team at your club, then make sure you drop us an email at development at and we'll be happy to help you every step of the way. Now, the football season may just have finished, but as you can see behind me, preparations are well underway for next season. So Kent FA's Aidan Ainsley caught up with Gina Kendall, who we believe is the only female grounds person in Kent to find out what goes on in terms of maintaining pitches at the grassroots level. So Gina, thanks for having us down here to Selinge uh, on what's a really lovely day. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your involvement in football and I guess how you got started? Yeah, I've uh, been playing football since I was nine years old. Uh, started in primary school, uh, worked my way through the schools, uh, ended up playing for Dover, then Ashford, uh, and then most recently Selinge Ladies. Um, and now I'm at the point in my career where I'm now moving into coaching. Oh, brilliant. So I'm super excited about that. Yeah, no, excellent. And it's a uh, men's team that you're about to start coaching, is that right? Yes, yes. Next next season I am uh, doing Saltwood AFC men's team, which I'm really looking forward to. Brilliant. No, fantastic. And how did you end up uh, getting involved with the groundwork here at Selinge? So, uh, primarily it was... All the teams that play here, uh, under 15s, the men's, ladies, um, and I, I was asked if I would do the pitch one week, and I did. Um, it was very hard, um, and then I ended up going, uh, doing it more regular, uh, so just so everyone could play football. Yeah. And you know, it's turned out it's actually quite therapeutic as well. Yeah, and also you did that for a huge tournament that you ran. Was it last summer? Last summer, yeah, yeah I ran a massive tournament, um, and. That was my um, my first doing the grounds, making sure they were prepped and ready for this tournament because it was a lot of teams. Yeah. And yeah, I take pride in my pitches now, and yeah. it's really nice because everyone looks forward to like playing up here. I've had so many compliments over the last few few weeks actually. Yeah. So it's been really really good. No, brilliant. And um, we think that you may be the only female grounds person in the county. So, I mean, what do you think? you would kind of give as advice to, to others that may be considering getting involved in this part of the game? Definitely get involved. Ask whoever you need to ask um, at the clubs. Um, it's really easy to learn and it does take a little bit of time out of your week but it's super rewarding. 
Yeah, no, fantastic. Yeah, and I'm sure that people can see behind us the uh, the great work you've done with the pitches yeah, here. And, yep. and yeah, I think uh, you're going to be a real inspiration to, to, to other women across the county to get involved. So thank you very much for your time Not today. A and um, yeah, Kwaku, back to you. Cheers, Aidan, and a massive thanks to Gina for sharing her inspirational story. If your club needs any advice when it comes to pitches, make sure you drop us an email at development at kentfa.com. Next up, we caught up with Georgie, who's the Her Game 2 ambassador for Bromley FC, to find out more about that important campaign and about how your club can get involved. Hi, I'm Georgie, so I'm the Bromley FC um, Her Game 2 ambassador. I'm just going to talk a little bit about Her Game 2 and how to get involved in the campaign. So, Her Game 2 is a campaign that's been running for nearly two years now, um, back in tw um, 2021. And its main aim is to help eradicate sexism within football and really support women and girls who go and watch games, um, whether that's men or women's games, and who want to play the game. So it involves a group of ambassadors from a range of clubs, from Premier League, EFL, all the way down to non-league and grassroots as well. And what they do is they help support women and girls who go and watch football um, and just try and get that message out there um, as much as possible. So really what we kind of want to do is just to spread that message as much as possible and a way to get involved um if you come and speak to me my contact details are on the website or our Gillingham ambassador page we can help to get some more grassroots clubs partnered up or to some, get some you know other non-league clubs partnered up and it's really just to help promote the message and work together so like i said um our details are on the website uh, and we'd be, we'd be really pleased to hear from you so thanks amazing campaign and to find out more, make sure you head over to their website at www.hergame2.co.uk. Now, in Kent we have 24 squad girls centres that provide them playing opportunities for girls aged between 12 and 14. So Rebecca Moore caught up with Rising Stars FC to find out more about these sessions. So I'm here in Canterbury with Catherine and Nat from Rising Stars for their squad girls session. So why did you guys decide to set up squad girls? We wanted to give an opportunity to the girls who didn't necessarily want to play league football, maybe didn't weren't confident enough to play league football, um, but still wanted to be able to kick a ball around and, and have fun. Perfect. And what benefits do you think Squad Girls has to the girls? What do you think it, it gives them values-wise on and off the pitch? Um, they have developed some great friendships. Mm -hmm. Their confidence has increased, certainly with a couple of our players. Mm -hmm. And it gives them extra training time mm -hmm. when they're playing for their um, otherwise their otherwise yeah, team. Yeah. Fantastic. And do you think with this age group, do you think it helps them with off the pitch things as well? So does it tie into maybe their leadership, things like that? Or do you think it's more mostly benefits on the pitch? I think any leadership skills, obviously, it gives them a chance to. What, what One of the things I like the most about a squad is that you ask the girls what they want to do. So sometimes they won't all want to do the same thing, but squad allows you to set up different activities for different players, and that just keeps them enjoying it more when they get a say in what they do. Um, and this group certainly seems to love it. So. Fantastic. And I mean, you do some really great things down here, and the girls obviously keep coming back, but why do you think they keep coming back to a community session like squad? Just they, it's quite a small group, we've got small numbers, but that just means they've all got to know each other quite quickly, I think, and they just like, you know, they, they feel relaxed with each other. They haven't got any nerves, it comes along, you know, we have some music on, it just, it's a good, it's a good environment, they feel, seem to feel really happy. That's why I think they keep coming back. Perfect. And finally, what are your ambitions for Squad Girls? So what do you want to do with your centre? How, where do you want it to go? What's its role within the club? Um, it's, it's, as I said, for any girl that doesn't want to do competitive football, um, but also we had a, a coaches meeting and I think what we'd realised is a big gap in schools. So to try and get our numbers up, we're going to try and talk to local secondary schools and from September get some sessions going at different schools so that girls who perhaps might not have had any chance to play football ever will get an opportunity and then they can hopefully take it from there. Fantastic. Thank you very much, ladies. Love that. And to find a squad girl session near you, make sure you head over to our website at www.kentfa.com. Now, Kent Football Show would not be complete without a skills and drill session with our very own David Webb. Let's see what he's got in store for us this week. Today, I'm going to show you a fun activity that you can do at home with a friend, sibling, parent or carer. And all you need is a football and some items from around the house. This activity is going to help you with your ball movement and will get you ready to roar on the Lionesses. So now you've got your item, mark out a box and start with the ball inside. Your helper will have one minute to try and throw as many items as they can at your ball. Your aim is to try and avoid those items making contact. The key thing with this activity is to 
be creative like Russo, using different parts of your feet to move the ball, as well as making quick movements like Kirby to avoid the items from making contact with the ball. Using the inside and outside parts of your feet will help to direct the ball away from oncoming items. Using the sole of your foot will be able to help you move the ball quickly and under control in multiple directions. Finally, to avoid the items from making contact with your ball, you're gonna to have to be looking and scanning like Walsh. This is gonna be able to help you best prepare for your next move. To make this challenge easier, you can increase the size of the area, meaning that you have more space to be able to get into and avoid the items from making contact with the ball. Or you can use smaller items, which will mean that there's less chance of the items actually hitting the ball. To make this challenge harder, you can decrease the size of the area, resulting in quicker decisions and quicker reactions. Or you can have the items coming in from different angles, resulting in greater awareness. So now you know what to do, why don't you give it a try using either the easier or the harder challenges. Get into the World Cup fever by getting in touch and letting us know how you get on. Nice one, David. And make sure you let us know how you get on those skills and drills by commenting down below. Next up, we catch up with Kent FA's Football Development Officer, Rebecca Moore, who gives us an update on the emerging talent centres for girls in Kent. So we are down at the Victory Academy for one of the final times this year uh, for the Girls Emerging Talent Centre. So we've been down here for the last 30 weeks. So we thought we'd take an opportunity to just look back and reflect on the year we've had. Uh, we've got 90 girls on our books across under 14s to under 16s. Um, and we've managed to get them through uh, 30 weeks worth of training, weekly training. And then they've had the luxury of going down to Canterbury Christchurch and had some sports science workshops delivered by um, Sports Lab. So they've had their psychology, nutrition, and we've gone through fitness testing as well with them. So they've had lots of exposure to more um, elite experiences. And then we're just looking at how we can plan and go forward for next year. So looking to increase and, and add an under 13 so that we can support more girls across Kent to reach their full potential in the game. Great work, Becky. We absolutely love to see it and we can't wait to see the players develop in their careers. Now, every year the Kent FA hosts 25 County Cup competitions and this year there's been plenty of bangers, a lot of goals scored. But since it's the women's and girls takeover, we're going to look at the best goals from their games. Let's check it out. Fires it over the top of the goalkeeper. What a good goal from Relitsa Nediva. 1-0 to VCD United. Lucy Hope up against Chapman, gets the better of Chapman, gets the cross in as well. Here's Banks, and there is number two. Wilkinson does win it back. It's a good run, this, from Kelsey Wilkinson. She might just go all the way. It's Kelsey Wilkinson. It's a brilliant goal for Maidstone United. Chipped over the top. That's a good ball. And finished brilliantly. Well, the through ball was exceptionally good. No ball over the top. The chase is on. Good play by Lois Shooter. Brilliant finish from Lois Shooter. Onto the left foot. She could not have hit it any better. Madison Massey. Super penalty. High over the top of Emily Orchard. Powers it home. And it's Seven Oaks nil, sitting ball one. That's a great through ball from Natalie Graves to the left hand side. Wybrow, one all. Amy Wybrow saw the goalkeeper coming out and she was cool and she stayed composed. Creswell. Mary Bashford comes inside. It's Bashford. It's 3 0. Mary Bashford. It's a screamer into the top corner. What did I tell you? Some absolute bangers in there. Congratulations to everybody who made it to a Kent County Cup final. Last up is the main event, what you've all been waiting for, the Crossbar Challenge. And this week, it's the turn of Dartford Women FC. Let's see how they go on. Hi right, guys, we're here with Dartford Women's football team. Yay! We're here for the Crossbar Challenge and they've got one minute to see how many times they can hit the crossbar. The record at the moment is five. Let's see how they get on. Well, I'll count you in, I'll count you in. Three, two, one, go. 
but unlucky. So let's see if you can get one early doors. Good effort. Oh, keeper saving that. Had 10 seconds already. Oh, unlucky. Come on, let's get one on the board early. There we go. You've had 25 seconds. Yes, Alicia. Unlucky. Oh, close. You've had over half your time. Two. 20 seconds left. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, oh, there we go. And that's time. I think it was three. So, Dartford women's team have got three. There's five still the target to beat. Let's see if anyone else can beat it. If you want to have a go, get in touch. Thank you. Oh, solid effort from Dartford women, but they only got three. So it means that this year's joint crossbar challenge champions are Barman Youth and Kent Sands United. Congratulations, guys. But if you think that your team could do better, make sure you drop us an email at info at kentfa.com for your chance to be featured next season. And unfortunately, this is the last episode of the Kent Football Show for the season. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you to everybody who's been involved in the last three episodes. Thank you to yourselves for tuning in, and we'll see you next season.